up until this point, everything was anchor based. It was either proposal based or anchor based. Can we get rid of the anchors? And that's going to be the topic of the next few papers. Are anchors really necessary? And can we get away without anchors? One of them is corner net is one of the first few papers trying to come up with algorithms for bounding box detections that are anchor free or proposal free. I'm gonna unravel this figure. It's about our glass network. And here is my question for you. Where did we see our glass networks? Semantic segmentation. Uh, we saw them for semantic segmentation for per pixel prediction. And actually the answer on the chat is more appropriate. It was about pose estimation, which is a per pixel prediction task. So yeah, we saw it for pose estimation. And what is the idea here? You are gonna treat these uh, corners of your boxes as key points, as if they are poses or key points of uh, these objects. So we are turning the object detection problem into a pose estimation problem. And that was why I was focusing on pose estimation because it's really important, okay? Those ideas, you can generalize them to actually do detection. And so far, so good, but it's not that trivial. Don't worry about the rest of this figure yet because I want to break it apart now. So the task is detecting corners the same way that you are detecting key points. You are gonna output two sets of heat maps. These are per pixel predictions. Each one of them are gonna have C channels which are the number of categories. For instance, for Pascal VOC, that was 20. And for Coco, Microsoft Coco, that's around 80, actually 80. One of them is predicting the top left corners. The other one is predicting the bottom right corners. And then it's a matter of post-processing. And then let's go into more details. Each channel is gonna be a binary mask, like what you were doing for pose estimation, indicating the location of the corners for a class. So the output of your neural networks is gonna be per pixel, per channel for that object. These are my scores. So this is my predicted heat map. The entire thing is gonna give you the predicted heat map. What is the ground truth for it? You know your data, you know the boxes, you know the top left coordinate, the bottom right coordinates of your boxes. These are your ground truth, but then you're gonna smooth them out rather than having a one hot vector here, you're gonna smooth that one hot vector into a smoother function for your neural network to be able to approximate it. You're gonna write down a loss function. It looks complicated, but actually it's not. What are you trying to do here? You're using a variant of your focal loss and we went through the focal loss. And what was the idea there? You wanted to downweight the easy cases. And what are the easy cases? Background is an easy case, or larger objects are easy cases. So you want to downweight them. And why would you do that? Because you have class imbalance. So you're gonna downweight the ones that your model is really confident. Let there be a corner there, or if there is no corner there, and your algorithm is really good at detecting no corners, then you need to downweight that as well. So this part is the focal loss. But then near the boundaries or near the ground truth locations, you don't need to, uh, you need to penalize, you need to reduce the penalty. Because whenever YCIJ is close to one, then you are near detecting a corner. And then uh, there is a high chance that actually there is a corner there. So don't downweight it. So this Gaussian approximation or this Gaussian smoothing in addition to this reduced penalty, is helping you detect the corners better, okay? That's your loss. You're gonna train your neural network. So it's gonna have some shared parameters. It's gonna have two heads that are really similar, but then there is a catch. So I'll just explain the heat map portion of the architecture. Let's go to the offsets. There's a catch here. Once you stop at a feature map after a bunch of convolutional layers, the resolution of your original image is gonna shrink and shrink. It's gonna become smaller by a factor of n. But then you have to quantize that for you to fall in that, uh, on that grid, on that particular feature map. But then if you want to translate this back to the actual locations on your original image, 
you lost some information. So the task of this offset head is to do that adjustment for us. And the problem arises because after a bunch of convolutions, you're downscaling your feature map compared to your original image. So multiple uh, pixels in your original image are gonna correspond to a single pixel in the feature map. So you're just gonna have to have a neural network offsetting that for us. And because you know your ground truth locations for your corners, you're gonna be able to adjust the offsets. You're gonna have a neural network head predicting the offsets. And the offsets are in the form of L1 loss. That's the ground truth. This is the prediction. You match them. Okay, so far so good. So I explained heat maps, offsets. Now here is a problem. For a particular class, like the horse class here, there might be multiple objects. There might be multiple horses in your image. How do you know whether this top left corner should be associated to this bottom right corner and not this other one? How should, I, how should your algorithm know? You can borrow ideas from part affinity map, which was about multi-person key point estimation, or there is another idea, which is about associated embedding. This is a classical idea for multi-pose pose estimation, multi-person pose estimation. What does it do? You are gonna output some embeddings. These are just vectors. A vector for the top left and the bottom right corners, you're gonna output two vectors. And then you're trying to group the corners in your loss function. How would you do that? You are gonna try to pull these vectors towards a center, which is the average of these two. So it's gonna be the average embedding of the top left and bottom right. So you're gonna pull the top left and bottom right embeddings towards this average throughout your training. But this is not enough. This is gonna give you a trivial solution if you do that you're gonna pull everything to zero. You're gonna need a pull and push type of a framework. And what is the push doing? It is trying to separate these centers from each other. This is in the form of a hinge loss. And whenever you want to interpret a hinge loss, this is what you want to minimize. Whenever this is uh, less than zero, your loss is gonna be happy. And this is gonna be less than zero whenever this quantity is bigger than delta. So you're trying to push these apart at least delta. That's what your loss is gonna do. And as I mentioned, these are just the centers, the average of these two vectors and this delta is one, and that's your margin. And in the end, you're gonna have a loss, which is gonna do the detection loss. You're gonna have this pull and push, and then you're gonna have the loss of the offset. And once you have all of these outputs, you know your heat map, you know the embeddings, which are gonna help you say this top left corner is gonna be associated with this button right corner rather than the other one. Once you have this information, there's gonna be a post-processing stage to actually draw these boxes and then non-maximum separation dedicated to this paper. So we are not done. There is gonna be a post-processing step, which I'm not gonna go through. Even then there is another catch and this is fundamental. And that's why we are gonna introduce two other papers. This is a motivation for those two. I explained everything. And this our class network, we explained it a long time ago when we came to pose estimation. The only thing that I'm not explaining is this corner pulling. Why would you do that? At this corner or at any other corner for that matter, you don't have any clue about your object of interest. So your algorithm is sort of clueless of what objects it's looking for. Why is that? Because locally around this point, the thing that you're seeing is the C in this case. It's gonna be the background, which is not something that you're interested in. So there is very little local evidence around your corners about the actual object. One way to fix this is using this corner pooling operation at your feature map hidden unit. Look from this top uh, left corner all the way down to the boundary and average your numbers together. So this is gonna be a pooling operation here. At this other point or the other corner pooling, look all the way to the right and then average these numbers. And then this is gonna give you a clue about other objects in your scene. There is no local clue. Maybe there is global clue as you do the averaging that way. And this architecture is gonna give you some pretty good results and they're gonna be anchor box free by reformulating your problem as a pose estimation problem or multi-person pose estimation.
It's going to be multi-object voice estimation or key point detection. Any questions about this one? Was everything clear? Okay, perfect.